Hello, Warlords. Raj here. Welcome to Saga Thursday, your regular source for that Saga miniatures game goodness. There's some big news in the Saga universe. It's not my new hat. We can talk about that later. No, it's the Age of Crusades book. So the Saga releases coming fast and furious, quicker than I can put out these videos, but I wanted to chat a little bit about that. As Salute was this past weekend, and some folks got their hands on a copy of the Age of Crusades book. There hasn't been a lot of details spilled as the I'm recording this video. Hopefully we can... Uh, get some juicy deets in the future here. So it is available for pre-order on the Gripping Beast website and the release date is April 30th and it looks like the pre-orders are maybe already going out so if you pre-ordered it it might already actually be on the way. I think they said they'd start mailing them April 16th which is uh, earlier than this video is released. So yeah they're coming out fast and furious and I do know the factions at least that are going to be in there so we've got the big six from the crescent and cross book of course crusaders spanish militus christi and the mutatawiya saracen and moors for the islamic factions the new stuff is the mongols that is freaking awesome i believe they have some new dice so history folks know the mongols arrived in the middle of this crusade business and started whooping some ass until the Mamluks stepped in and uh, other factions are the Byzantines which is cool I mean we had a last Romans board in the Viking book but now we've got another Byzantine board to work with so that's very cool Teutonic Knights that's awesome so they're separate from the Militus Christi order apparently which makes sense kind of a different geographical region and that's very cool. They have their own dice. Uh, I've seen pics of those as well. There's the pagans. I'm not totally sure what those guys are consist of. Maybe just Eastern pagan type folks. Maybe a more advanced version of the pagan ruse in the timeline. We have the Polish, which is cool. The uh, eternal enemy of the Teutonic order there, I believe. And then we have the Eastern Princes, so uh, basically the new version of the Rus Princes, which were missing from the Viking bug. So uh, there's some uh, friends and old friends using the old Hunborns. I think there's Cumans in there. So uh, a few extra factions like there was in the Viking book. So yeah, this is really awesome. So now everybody, once this is fully out there, uh, everybody's armies will be fully usable. So that is really cool. For a while there, if you were stuck in the Crescent and Cross era, you weren't able to get in the version two games like everybody else. So yeah, I'm really impressed by the timeline of everything is boom, boom. And then we have this other book here. So hopefully we can have some time to sit and digest before the next age of a uh, book come out. But uh, I'm pretty pumped and I can't wait to get my hands on it. So yeah, that's that. So as we uh, get into that, so I have a Militus Christi battle board review that was recorded maybe around when second edition was just coming out. So I couldn't really want to do some new videos. I couldn't really quite get it in to the timeline. I was hoping to get it out before Adepticon, but I couldn't quite do it. I thought I should do videos about the new stuff. So now I want to get it out there. Uh, I can do it in this week and then the following week and it'll be before the new book is officially released. So uh, maybe somebody can <laughs> use the advice and get uh, some games in. But otherwise, I know people are still playing first edition and aren't jumping on board with stuff. And then this is the last one for the uh, Crescent and Cross book of those factions that I've done. So I just feel like we need some closure here and it's a little late in the pipeline, but I'm getting it out. And then as a, a side issue, the re another reason why it was delayed was I lost my main video feed and my backup video feed. So if you're recording videos with folks online, you know, always have a backup feed. And in this case, I disabled the backup feed to try and increase the quality of the feed with Andy and it didn't quite work out when the main feed got gibbered up. So yeah, unfortunately the audio was tied to that main feed too. So I do have a backup audio. So we will have the first part of the Militus Christi here, uh, but it's just gonna be the audio. We will have the 
battle boards displayed out and the quality isn't quite the same as uh, whatever the minimum quality you've come to expect from these Saga Thursday videos. It's not quite, not quite there, but uh, hopefully some folks will find some enjoyment from this. This is with Andy Lyons, and he's the one who gave me this lovely Saga hat, so thanks to him, uh, we caught up at Adepticon, and sad to see the dude hat go, at least for the Saga videos. But uh, yeah, I'm happy to have a, a Saga hat here to, to rock out with every Saga Thursday. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get in this Militus Christi action and uh, yeah, let's complete our review of the Crescent and Cross. We are chatting again with Mr. Andy Lyons, closing us out of the uh, 1.0 battle boards here. How's it going, Andy? to get uh, finally an army with some gusto a bit of balls behind it ah. <laughs> so you did the Strathclyde and the Saracens previously so you weren't too impressed with those oh, the ones Strathclyde. Strathclyde I'm happy with yeah the, yeah, okay. the, the Saracens are like playing but um, it's a tough ask to get okay. away climb it uphill so Militus Christi a uh, decent faction for sure this is one that I actually have played against uh, more than a few times so um, she'll be able to provide some knowledge there. So, yeah. So this is the last Crescent and Cross faction, and if you want to lump in the Atheist and Arthur battle boards for for 2.0, that means this is the last one here. So, uh, quite quite a journey. Um, okay. So let's get into the uh, troop types here. So. Yeah. Warlord, I see he's got to be mounted along with the Hearth Guards. And then for the Warriors, they could be mounted on foot or on foot with crossbows. And it says here the faction does not have levies and, no, desp no. and despises them. They added that little nugget <laughs> there. Peasants. All peasants. Mm -hmm. We crush peasants. Yes. So, um, yeah, we got warriors with crossbows for some shooting so yeah they're useful they're good especially if you i mean you can have a number of crossbows only equal to the number of half guard models you have so if you only have eight half guard models you can only have eight crossbows if you have you know as this board um tends to like the half guard uh you tend to have more half guard than not so you can have a nice big juicy 12-man crossbow unit which uh -huh. I have uh, experienced that as well. Yeah, people uh, people know when they've played against it, definitely. Yeah, so I don't think there's really any abilities that really soup up the crossbow, but the crossbow is just pretty good on its own there. Yeah. So, very cool. So, let's go up top. Um, so, we've got the Hearth Guard and Warriors activations. We yeah, got the best one, yeah. Activation pool, which is a little different on this one because of the piety mechanic. So normally you can roll two, two dice for a rare, and this one starts out at one saga die. So basically, be trading a rare for something. So I uh, wouldn't wouldn't recommend that. But if you get your piety up, you can start rolling two, three. Uh, I've seen four <laughs> saga dice at a time. So that could be pretty yeah, it's good. A bit, it's a bit like a slightly better version of the Yom's Vikings um, activation pool, where they're rolling based on the number of wrath they've got. You're, you're rolling based on the level of your piety, but you get that one to start with as well. Mm -hmm. And then, you, yeah, you have a lot better control over your piety level versus the Yom's uh, as well. So, okay. Yeah, that one I think definitely plays in to the strengths of the board. And then we've got the combat pool which is also playing off this same mechanic here. Do you want to describe that for us? Yeah, the combat pool. Well, a lot of the abilities and the combat pool, their efficiency is affected by the level of piety. So a lot of the abilities, it will say X plus X, uh, and X is the level of your piety, as we'll see later on. So but with the combat pool, you can use it in melee for attack or defense dice. Um, or as a shooting reaction for defense dikes. What you can't do, unfortunately, is pimp your crossbow shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, melee, 
defense or attack or shooting defense uh, and it every dice you spend on here you will notice however that you can't use common dice in this combat pool um, oh. whereby you can in, in all other combat pools so you can't use your, your common dice so it's a an uncommon or a rare dice and for each dice you spend you get one attack or one defense dice plus one extra dice for each piety you have so at level three piety each dice you spend in the combat pool is worth four dice mm-hmm. each dice four dice yeah now you can't you can't split those four dice into two attack and two defense they've got to be um the additional dice have got to match what the initial one you pick is so if you're picking in a melee if you're picking attack dice then the, all four will be attack dice okay that makes sense yeah so a few little interesting uh, niggles there with an um uh, yeah, uh, towards the end of the game, some great efficiency with this ability um, gets used quite frequently. So it makes sense why they pulled the the common dice off there at least. Yeah, it would be it would be too good because quite often you you left you're left with a lot of common dice that you can't do anything with um, apart from move warriors or or hearthguard. And if you don't want to do any movements, you can't play them on many abilities. So. Um, if you would then bang them all in the combat pool, as you tend to do, with the <laughs> you would. <laughs> it would be a bit too much. Yeah, I get pretty bananas. So, okay, moving on to prayers. So, this point, we can uh, I guess chat about the the piety mechanic because this is how you're going to be souping it up. So, this is a orders ability, and. It uses a uncommon and a rare. You may place any number of dice in this box, discard more dice than your current piety to gain one piety. And then it does say at the bottom, even though it's at on the top row there, so you think you could use it more than once, it says you can only be, be triggered once per turn. Yeah, it doesn't stop you loading it up with lots of dice and you know, putting five dice in if you want and spending two of them in one turn and leaving the rest on. It's not, it's not like the ones below the... Um, below the header where you can't put more dice in then you know you can't build them up and save them over you can with the players um, and this is how you get your, your piety moving so you can stick as many dice in there as you like and just spend the ones you need to spend mm-hmm. uh, bearing in mind though, that these are your um, useful dice so you you have to manage this very carefully yeah your uncommons and your rares again so to start with you get the first level you just need one of those and then it goes yeah, two. Yeah, one, one dice and will get you from zero to one. Because it's always, if, there's two ways of looking at it. You've got to spend one dice more than your current level, or you've got to spend a number of dice equal to the number you want to get up to. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it starts out at one, then two, then three, then four. It's yeah. more expensive each turn. Mm-hmm. So getting three is an average in a game. Uh, four is exceptional. And I don't think I've seen anybody with five or six, unless you're <laughs> playing a game that's got eight turns and then you might get a chance of getting a bit more but generally once you've got up to four you don't need any more yeah I, I would say that that those levels you talked about are correct I don't see much movement or action out of these Militus Christi until they get to the three at least in my area and then sometimes I'll see the four but yeah I guess if you keep in mind that towards the middle of the game most most players will have it up to three uh, when we're looking at these various abilities as we go down there to uh, rate their effectiveness so okay cool so that's kind of their shtick they kind of soup yeah, up over um, the course of the game building their religious fervor well depending on the scenario you're playing that's if there's nothing you need to do urgently in the first couple of turns it's generally um, build up your piety and maybe just fire off some crossbows if you can mm-hmm yeah, and that's kind of one reason this board isn't my favorite because it so obviously favors just sitting back for those first couple turns. Yeah, um, I mean I've seen I've seen in tournament play um, some players trying to do nothing until the last turn and get it all done in the last turn. <laughs> it's a bit of a gamble, but you can do it with this army. You can get everything done in the last turn. Mm-hmm. And I, Especially if it's um, a slaughter count, you know most slaughter points win if you can keep out of trouble for five turns on the last turn you've got four piety then you can go in and and you know really do some damage yeah i think there's a couple of abilities that really play into that strategy as well um preventing you from being slowed down stuff like that you're going to be mounted you have plenty to move to get where you want so yeah i can understand why you know this is probably the 
20th or Battleboard they they were working on, so they wanted to make it unique, you know, kind of yeah. put some mechanic in there. But it for, for me, anything that kind of obviously favors defense or sitting back it, it isn't my favorite. I don't have any issues, but it's just not my favorite. No, I mean, you can get going from the first turn. Your abilities still work. They're just not as effective. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not to stop you getting stuck in, and I've done it, and sometimes it catches people out. So don't expect you to launch oh. an attack. Yeah, that's a good. That's a great point. So, yeah. Uh, so they've not they've not necessarily piled anything on their board to to defend against an attack, and you hit them with a surprise attack on the first turn. <laughs> that's awesome. Good deal. Okay. So, do you want to kick us off here with Armor of Faith? Yeah, Armor of Faith, a melee or a shooting reaction. So, like the combat pool, uh, we can use it uh, in melee or uh, as a shooting defense. Uh, any dice for this, and we gain two defense dice or we gain four defense dice if we use a rare symbol, the banner. So, um, this is where one of the unusable common dice always gets dropped most turns when you find you can't put them anywhere else. Uh huh. So this always gets a common dice. Yes, very common ability. Good good bang for your buck. And then... Yeah, good, good dice efficiency. Um, I, you... don't, I don't recall using a, a rare dice for it, for four, for four defense dice. Because mm-hmm. um, there's, there's more useful things you can do with that. Mm-hmm. But then, of course, um, combining that with the combat pool, potentially later turns, you can easily count on uh, five or six uh, solid dice to add to your pools. So very, yeah. very good ability. Yeah, I agree with the common thing. I'm, I see this quite frequently on many boards, and um, it is a shooting reaction. So two defense dice against shooting is quite, quite handy. And yeah, 50% for, chance each one's going to save. It'll save you a half guard. Mm-hmm. Or uh, keeping some crossbows alive as well. Yeah. So it's nice to have something there in addition to the combat pool. So you can obviously use both of those. And you could suit up two different shooting activations between the pool and this armor of faith here if that was a concern for you. So, yeah, great great ability here. Yeah. The combat pool is the, fe- the, you know, the preferred use. Um, but if you haven't got the dice to do it, then you've always got a common dice left over. Mm-hmm. Okay, great ability. Moving down to Martyrs, this is a melee ability that can also use all three dice. If at least one of your brothers is eliminated during this melee, discard all fatigue from your unit at the end of step eight. So it specifically says brother, so that's a hearth guard, correct? Hearth guard only, yeah. Hearth guard only ability. So if you lose a hearth guard, you're going to discard all your fatigue at the end of step eight, which I believe is the very last phase of combat. So you get to fight. If you lose a guy, you will uh, be f- <laughs> fresh and ready to go and do it again if you, if you so choose. Yeah, there's a, this this army is very good at stop go and getting a lot done in one turn, which is again why the last ten or two you can get a lot done. This ability lets you charge around the board, build up some fatigue, do a fight, and then be fresh and ready to go again. Mm-hmm. Same turn. So potentially can shed quite a bit of fatigue here, uh, at least one, maybe if you have more they'll be encouraged to use the fatigue rather than let it build up on you. Um, this basically stops you from getting exhausted. Yeah, you, do, you don't want to be exhausted, but you know, a little bit of fatigue or even two or three fatigue isn't necessarily as, a bad as, thing. As, as we'll gonna... see. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's... um. A little dicey. I mean, you have to lose a guy, but you know, yeah, some, sometimes you'll just make all your rolls or whatever. But um, if you're going into a big yeah. combat or something, you can typically rely on a one or two getting through. Yeah, and if you've got a common dice and nowhere else to put it, it's not a bad place to drop it just in case. True, just a just a bonus, yeah. Um, and if if you're defending as well, you'll get to see what all abilities the other guy uses first. Yeah. Um, So if they do soup up for a bunch of uh, abilities, you'll be like, well, I guess I will probably lose a guy here, so I'll use it. (laughs) Uh, Okay, cool. Liking that one. You want to move down to buy the book there? Yeah, so depending on how you've got your board loaded up, you might not want to play Martyrs because you might want some fatigue left on your unit. Um, Buy the book is a melee ability. And in this one, once you've engaged in melee with your two or three fatigue and you trigger this ability, you remove from one of your units engaged in the melee 
one fatigue and you can remove one extra fatigue for each level of your piety. Uh, the unit gains a number of attack dice equal to the number of fatigues removed in this way. So you can, if you've got three piety, you can shed up to four fatigue. I'm not suggesting you go in exhausted because you'll only generate half your dice before you get to remove Correct. Them. Step two or three. Yes. Yeah, so going in with three fatigue is the optimal um, for your hearth guard with this one. Uh, so if you remove the three fatigue, and you get three extra attack dice for that, and there you go, no fatigue for him to spend uh, when you pass it over to him to say, what would you like to do? Mm -hmm. Great, great ability. The thorn in the side of yeah. many uh, <laughs> opponents of the Militus well, Christi here. Fatigue, if you, a lot of fatigue kills some armies, and any time you've got an ability that removes fatigue um, is very good. And this one, again, lets you... Um, charge across the table, do a couple of things, have no fatigue, um, and then carry on and do something else. And I've seen people go from one diagonal corner of the table to the other and and get something done at the other side of the table. Absolutely. So a couple comments. So it's a melee ability. Yep. So obviously you're going to be wanting to use this when you are on your turn attacking. Because yeah, otherwise once your opponent's going to spend them before you get to do Yes, it. so most likely you won't have more than one or maybe two or something to, to use, uh, potentially if you are loaded up there. And yeah, another great ability um, to get rid of a bunch of fatigue. So Yeah, you want to use this when you're the attacker. There are other abilities further on, which we'll probably come into in part two, um, that are better for defensive things. Mm-hmm. Alrighty, so why don't we head down? I'm gonna let you do this one because I'm not 100% sure on how to pronounce. <laughs> Is it just the Deus Volt? Deus Volt. Deus Volt. All right. Uh, so um, this is an order's ability. Um, until the end of your current turn, so that's your player turn only, your opponent may not use any fatigue from your mounted units to reduce their movement and no activation reaction abilities uh, might be used to react to the activation. So this, <laughs> you can't get punished by the Yom's Vikings because you can't use it as an activation reaction. You can't be slowed down by people spending your fatigue, which means if you've, if you've laid your board out right, you can spend two or three moves getting from one side of the board to the other into melee with three fatigue, shed them off with the previous ability by the book, get some extra dice, and he can't spend any fatigue to up or down. <laughs> yeah, this one. <laughs> what's Lotus Christi? Like, what's fa what's fatigue? We don't we don't use those rules when when we play. Uh, yeah, this one is another great ability. Almost always see seeing it get used. So, yeah, it's also a good, a good foil for um, generating some extra dice because it's an orders ability. Um, with your activation pool, you might have a piety of three. So for every every rare dice you roll, you can roll four more saga dice. You might have a load of common dice which you, you, don't, you can't use on your abilities. So whether you're planning on doing a lot of moving or not, you can play Dust Vault, which will get rid of one of your dice, um, then puts it back in your dice pool. So when you do your activation pool, you've got another dice in the um, in the dice pool that you can roll. So you can turn a common symbol into something else uh, a bit more useful hopefully you'll probably roll another common but there you go mm -hmm. yeah towards the end of the game uh, with the, the piety levels up generally I've seen these guys just swarming in dice so this ability is basically up you know from the early yeah. out of the game till, till the rest of the game mostly and you mentioned you know, there's not a lot to do with the common dice either so um, yeah basically it almost becomes a part of the warband rule because you can expect it to be up uh, for the most part so yeah it's quite quite good um, yeah it's good it's good for um, countering things like punishment and um, and the Anglo Dane uh, one as well yeah right. I mean just the not you being able to slow for, for yeah. movement is good and then you had that's that thing on top of it um, so yeah really can make some unstoppable plays here so very cool all right god is merciful up on top this is using yeah. a it's a rare is that a rare the flag yeah, there it is. this is a great ability activation reaction so 
Uh, you can use it sometime during your turn or the opponent's turn. Play this ability after an enemy shooting has been resolved and one of your units has suffered at least one casualty. So that's interesting. Another ability where one of your guys has to die. But activate the target unit for a movement. If this unit engages melee with the shooting unit, each of its models generates one additional attack die during step one. During step one. So those can potentially be buffed even further down the road. Yeah, yeah, your keyword there is generates. Yeah. So when you've got um, your crossbow men, 12 crossbows, strung out in front of your knights, protecting them while they build up the piety, um, and somebody charges his eight-man half-guard javelin mounted unit uh, and chucks his javelins at you and you take a couple of casualties, you trigger this and you charge him and each of those crossbowmen generates two dice. Oh, cool. So I'm um, using it with the crossbows. Is it, yeah, you, you can catch it, catch people out. I think, yeah. Use it as a deterrent more than more than anything, because people won't want to shoot at them, because they know they're going to get charged by twelve or ten or eleven half guard in effect. Mm -hmm. So yeah, with the javelins or composite bows or the the medium range stuff, um, yeah. basically any one of your units can get a use out of this. Um, most people are probably thinking of your knight units, which are yeah. susceptible to shooting, but um, unless you're the Normans, um, to get in range, they'll have to put themselves within charge range unless you know there's some terrain or so something in the way, um, and it's going to be <laughs> quite a blistering counterattack uh, for sure. Yeah, what, so. you what you don't want to do is have your your mounted units exposed to shooting, so they need to be behind this screen unit. And the the main purpose of the crossbow unit is to protect your men while your piety goes up. Mm -hmm. So this is a deterrent from people shooting your crossbows at, at uh, within medium because they're going to get charged. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, great, great ability there. It's interesting activation reaction. So if somebody played out of uh, turn sequence on your turn to do some shooting, I think you could pop this. Is that? Um, no, because if they did, if they did some shooting in my turn, that would be an activation reaction. They'd be reacting to my activation. Uh, okay, yeah. So you can't you can't, uh, you can't react to a reaction. You can't. Uh, so you can't you can't have an endless flip flop of yeah. um, activation reactions kicking Call off. You can only react to an to an act to a a, a, a basic activation, yeah. not to a reaction. Yeah. The, the, the so Spanish yeah. Spanish rule. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> get uh, quite quite tricky there so and that's what we're going to call part one of our militus christi review as always these go way too long if you have any questions about what you saw or heard so far please post below and then if you have some details on the age of crusades books some links to blogs or reviews i know northern tempest will probably be getting a review out shortly please post it in the comments below for those folks who want to check out the new stuff otherwise i'm going to check back with you guys next week and hopefully there'll be a few more details out there on the web as far as the age of crusades go but otherwise i'm going to catch you guys then thanks for tuning in Saga.